tell she has a lot of faith in me. She uh, has to do a treatment at the beginning. <laughs> that the speaker say something worthwhile. <laughs> Are we kind of working with my echo here? Do we have it? Yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's good to be me. <laughs> As a new thought minister, your, your no, time is no, no. over, right? <laughs> Uh, New Thought Minister, uh, you know, obviously you know all about how things work, kind of write about everything. I mean, you can just ask Jean. I explain to her regularly how I'm right all the time. But some things are a little more difficult to understand, like, like our dog, Gracie. We take her on a walk on a leash several times a day, and sometimes both of us, but sometimes just one. And it started happening when Jean would, would take the Gracie out for a walk. She would come, Gracie would come running up to the door all excited, and I'd go to the door and open it and pet her, and then Jean would come several minutes later. And she explained that because we live on this quiet cul-de-sac, when she'd get to the top of it, she'd take Gracie off the leash and see, say, go see Bob. And she would come running in and, I mean, it's obvious, even though you can't understand her, that she really likes me. <laughs> She's running to see me when, when she says, go see Bob. But, except then the other day, we were walking her together, and as we got to the street, Gracie sort of, you know, wanting to smell things, pulled her over to the other side of the street. So we're on our little cul-de-sac, but opposite sides of the street, and Jean took her off the leash and said, go see Bob. And Gracie looked over at me and went straight to the house. <laughs> so I'm not sure who or what Bob is, but, but she's happy to get there. <laughs> so understanding things can be a little difficult. Like, you know, with Angie's talk last time, uh, most of you were here to hear that, and he said, after talking about forgiveness, he said, well, you know, there's really nothing to forgive, and, and perhaps Bob will talk about that next week. And, and I thought about that, and I said, I have no clue what he's talking about. <laughs> uh, you know, obviously, all of you are tremendous sinners and need to be forgiven. So <laughs> sure he also talked about going backwards, and in that I'm an expert at. So I figured I could talk about going backwards. You know, with, with Einstein's theories, mathematically, it actually shows that theoretically you can go backwards in time. And in fact, you know, electrons are negatively uh, charged particles, and there's positrons, which are exactly like electrons, except they have a positive charge. And the math for a positron is exactly the same as the math for an electron going back in time. But outside of that, it doesn't work. We know of no kinds of instance in which you can go back in time. And in fact, there's logical sequences from that that make it paradoxical, and you, you just simply can't do it. I'm sure some of you have heard those theoretical stories of science fiction writes about this kind of thing, but let's say I created a time machine, and I went back 120 years. And I was in an accident, and accidentally killed my grandfather before my father was born. Well, then my father wouldn't have been born, so I wouldn't have been born. So I couldn't have created a time machine to go back and accidentally kill my grandfather. But if I didn't do that, then my father was born, and then I was born, and then I would have created the time machine and gone back. <laughs> so you see, going back in time doesn't work. <clears throat> Although we do have a way to do it, and we all do it. We go back in time in our minds. And that's memory, of course. It's remembering things. And, and I've developed that memory. As you get older, you, you tend to develop it more. And, I've developed that kind that Mark Twain talked about, where he said, my memory is so much better as I've grown older that I even remember things that didn't happen. <laughs> I've developed that kind of memory. Uh, but 
But memory is a good thing. Obviously, we have lots of joyous memories that, that uh, we have. But where it's a bad thing is when we try to live in those memories. When we go back and try to live our life now as if it's then. And that's the sort of thing that causes us the problem and where we get into forgiveness. Because if something happened to us that we didn't like, that was bad, and particularly somebody else caused it, and we're living with that now as if it's a, a present day situation, then that literally destroys us. Because our mind is trying to deal with something that isn't there and it's creating all of these chemicals to deal with it, to fight or to run. And those chemicals, when not used, go into your body and disrupt it. And so living in the past can actually be killing us. And yet, it's a very easy thing to do. I work with uh, one of the women who worked for me. There was a man that she worked for at this other job and any time anything comes up that might bring that topic up, she starts talking to him, and you can see her get agitated. <laughs> she talks about him. And, and you can see her get all worked up and how bad he was and all these horrible things he did, and I try to calm her down. <laughs> but she is literally living in that past. And of course, that's why there's really nothing to forgive. Obviously, I was kidding when I suggested I, I didn't know something. Uh, <laughs> so, because it's not really forgiving that. It's letting go of it. It's being in the present instead of trying to do the impossible, which is to go into the past. And now we can use different methods to let go of that. And if one of those is forgiving, that's fine. 